Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms on the Heritage Pride Homestead. Got a little bit of wind today, so uh, I'm going to try to keep the video kind of short, and uh, hopefully you can basically just see what I'm going to be talking about in case you can't hear. So I'm sorry about the wind. Um, it's just something we can't uh, do anything about, but it also is a great thing because it keeps us cool. So anyway, today what I want to show you and talk to you guys about is my uh, rain catchment system here on the homestead and uh, I'll show you how it works and explain everything to you so you can kind of see um, what the process is so uh, let's get started alright so this is my rain barrel collection system um, it starts with a uh, diverter valve that's the first thing that that you have to uh, you have to start with some form of diverter um, in order to pull off of your roof, your gutter system, or whatever, you know, there's there's hundreds of ways that you can do rain collection. Um, but to catch on your your gutters, you have to have some some form of diverter system, and there's tons of them out there. Um, this one is made by Fiskers. This is called the Fiskers Diverter Pro. It's a pretty cool little deal. Uh, you just cut your downspout, and I have uh, six inch gutters. So I have the bigger downspouts um, with a metal roof uh, on a decent pitch. Six inch gutters will keep the water from ro rolling off of the roof so fast um, that the uh, it'll ca it'll actually catch it. So the diverter pro, the Fiskers diverter pro, uh, comes with the uh, preset for the bigger downspouts, but it also comes with the adapters for the smaller downspouts. So, um, with the smaller one, I did read some reviews about leaking. Uh, usually, most fixes involve some uh, silicone, and it was good to go. The cool thing I like about the, uh, the Fiskers is it has a uh, rake system in here that catches like bigger objects, like leaves or, or twigs or anything like that. It actually flows right off the top of there and on down the downspout. And then you can also pull it out here to clean it out and see all that pollen that uh, it's caught in the past few days. It is spring in Tennessee and we have pollen everywhere. So anyway, and then this just sets back down in here. It's hard to do left-handed, one-handed. So I'll get it back down here in a second. All right, I'm gonna have to switch hands. see there we go got it all right so that's the uh, the catchment system so on either side of the Fiskers diverter pro you've got two little outlets so what happens is the water comes down the big stuff rakes off of here and the water falls through into the lower section of that V that I just showed you and then as it fills up a little bit the water is just diverted into the uh, tubing now it comes on both sides you have a catch on both sides so you have a hole on both sides well because this guard is not a perfect seal uh, the the kit comes with like a flexible hose and so you you just flex one side whichever side's more convenient and then you cap the other side well I had read a review about a guy that said that if you could plumb both sides it would uh, it would catch a lot more water because it doesn't it's not perfectly level with the bottom of that so the water actually has to set a little bit to fill up to run in there so if you can plumb both sides you're going to catch more water so I thought well let's go ahead and do it so I, I ended up plumbing both sides of mine another thing I didn't like the black flexible pipe that uh, it came with um, for my application especially for uh, catching both sides so it come, come to find out that three quarter inch PVC fittings uh, glue right up to this perfectly and I glued everything in place so it's not going to go anywhere. So I just come off with everything and then tied it in so I'm catching water from both sides. That wind chime is driving me nuts, I'm sure it is you too. So the, the water's catching from both sides and then in my original design I had PVC that 45 here and then went over and ran into my, my barrel. Um, but what I ended up doing was because of the, the, the foundation that my barrels are sitting on, as they filled up, the barrels shifted. And when the barrels shifted, it pulled my pipe apart. Hey, buddy. 
Um, so we ended up getting some three quarter inch braided lines that actually flex. So now if the barrel shifts, it'll, it'll shift the, this and not pull apart. So first thing is the diverter. Second thing you're going to need are the barrels. Uh, now what I did was I went to um, the co-op, uh, local co-op, and they had a few barrels. Actually, the first time I went, they only had one. I bought it. I went back like six weeks later, and they happened to have two. The first one I bought was a food-grade barrel, and both of these said methanol on them. So I didn't realize that they said methanol until after I'd already purchased them. Uh, I didn't see them before I purchased them. Uh, also, the lids don't come off of these. They're fixed, so there's no drain in the bottom, and we'll get to that. Uh, but luckily, I had bung holes for them that could be threaded with three-quarter inch uh, fittings. So anyway, I got the barrels. I think I paid eight or ten bucks a piece for them. I can't remember now. Got them home. They said methanol on them. They had danger flammable signs and all this other stuff. So. I didn't want to get rid of them and I did some research. I started doing some research. I found a chemist on a forum that uh, same question been asked, can I use methanol for uh, potable drinking water containers? And um, fortunately I'm not using this for potable water but he did in fact say that it could be used for potable water and he gave a uh, process on how to extract the methanol from the barrels. Um, or anything, any other toxins, but mainly methanol, uh, the process for that. So I completed that process, and uh, it took me about four days to go through the process to do that. Um, didn't cost me anything more than some baking soda and vinegar and some soap um, and a little bit of water. We flushed them out real good. So they don't smell a bit like methanol now. There's no traces of anything oily inside anymore. So I am confident that they will be fine for uh, the purposes for us, which we're going to be using them for garden water as well as uh, animal water. So for animals, uh, to water our animals and, like I said, to water our plants. So, um, and heck, if we've got enough of it, we can wash the cars with it or we can do whatever. So barrels, diverter, your plumbing. Now what I did was since we don't have, I couldn't, put a grommet I couldn't get inside the barrel obviously because there's a lid on it so I couldn't get inside the barrel to put the grommets in um, the rubber gasketed grommets uh, to connect them I wanted to run them in a pair so when one fills up they both fill up simultaneously and then when you uh, drain them they both drain simultaneously unfortunately I couldn't do that because I don't have access to putting in the grommets so everything runs from the top so let's, let's talk about our fill. Uh, the water comes down from the diverter, and right here we've got a T that drops into the top of this barrel, and then it continues on over another flexible line um, to an elbow, a 90 degree elbow, that drops into this barrel. So you will get a little bit of residual run that'll run over and fill this one up while this one's filling up, but for the most part, this one will fill up first, and then once it fills up, the water will back up and it'll overflow into this barrel. So this will be our primary and secondary. Um, we did have, I did get this one installed first. We had one rain, one night, and I'm only catching, let me show you this, let me back up and show you this. I'm only catching about a third of one side of my roof right now. Just this little overhang over the front porch. So that one gutter I was overflowing the next morning so we had one one decent rain on one night and we filled up a 55 gallon drum off a third of my roof so the diverter works excellently I mean I don't even know if excellently is a word but it, it works excellent so um, fill up this one and then you fill up this one so primary and secondary now let's talk about our water extraction process what I've created was I was I was missing a bung hole. All right, so I had had one threaded one for this one and not a second one. I had one threaded one for that one and then I had a second solid one. Um, but in order for the diverter to work properly, <clears throat> the water has to fill up in the barrels and then back up in the system. And then once it backs up and no more water can run, then it flushes back out the downspout like it would normally. So. In theory, we need a way to seal it off 
um, but give it enough headroom so that the water level here doesn't exceed the water level there or it minim more minimal. So in other words, uh, we need it to back up into the diverter, but we still need to have access. So what I built was a standpipe. And the standpipe is nothing more than a two inch, uh, two inch uh, slip fitting to threaded fitting, PVC. I've got nine inches of PVC pipe and then a two inch to uh, inch and a half slip and then a one inch to three quarter inch slip and then a three quarter inch uh, slip to threaded connector. And then this little brass fitting right here is a three quarter inch uh, standard thread to a three quarter inch garden hose. So uh, it, it just uh, adapts it. And then this is just a quick connect thing. You get these at any uh, hardware store or a home improvement center. It's a water hose quick connect. It just threads on like uh, you could put it on your water hose spigot on your house and then put the, the mail adapter on the end of your garden hose and then it's just a quick connect. So there's no breaking your knuckles, rubbing them against the house trying to screw it on. So it's a quick connect. Now, what's special about this is how does it suck the water? You've got a little pump. How do we suck the water? Well, we put a standpipe in it, a dipstick, whatever you want to call it. So I just measured uh, to within two inches of the bottom of the barrel, and then we just slide this right down in here, and then our pump hooks right up to the quick connect, and it sucks the water right out of the system. And I'll show you how that works here in just a second. So that that's the catchment process. Now we need to we and we've talked about the extraction standpipes. And what I have here is a uh, is a Wayne utility pump. It's 115 volt. They also make them in a 12 volt. So if you're worried about not having power, um, I wanted the 115 volt um, just for convenience. I can plug it right in. I've got outlets in the front and back of my house. I can plug it right in and run it. Now I will be getting a 12 volt one as a backup uh, for solar power if we ever. For, for worst case scenario if we ever needed it. But right now we have electricity so it's more convenient to use the 115 than to charge batteries and run off solar. So we connect um, we connect the end, comes with this little tube right here. We connect that, we've got a quick connect fitting on here. And that quick connect fitting just is attached to the end of my uh, suction hose. It just goes right down in here like this, connected. And then we're connected to the pump. And then what I did to increase the water pressure of this pump, I bought an RV or camping style water hose. So instead of being a 5 8 inch hose, it's a half inch. So it sucks through 5 8 three quarter to 5 8 and then you've got a, a half inch output. So it gives us just a little bit more pressure with this pump. Um, now when you start this pump, you need to prime it with a little bit of vegetable oil that keeps the gears from burning up on you, keeps the motor from burning up. But once you've done that, you're good to go. Now, if your pump sets for a little while, you'll want to, you don't have to prime the, this pump. It primes itself priming, but you do want to put a little bit of vegetable in there to keep it from, uh, to keep it from burning the pump up. Uh, and you want to do that uh, after you use it for a day or whatever, uh, and you go to use it again, put a little bit of vegetable oil in there, and that'll, uh, that'll keep it going. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the pump up now and show you the watering right. process. So the pump is running. We're gonna go ahead and uh, water our onions. There we go, watering our onions with rainwater stored from our uh, water storage system. And that's all there is to it. My onions really don't need water. Uh, we've had some rain recently, uh, a few days ago. Second season of my Hugel culture bed, and it should stay pretty wet as long as we get a rain every now and then. So, um, anyway, that's it. That's the uh, you can see the pressure is not too bad on it. I mean, it's not house pressure, but pretty good for a little pump. So, anyway, guys, that's uh, that's it for my uh, let me get this pump unplugged here. There we go. That's it for my uh, rainwater collection system on the front. Um, before I end the video, let me run around to the uh, the back of the house and uh, back at the mini farm area, and I will show you the rain catchment system back there. 
All right, guys, so this is my little uh, mini farm shed. I call this little area back here my mini farm. Um, this is my little pole shed that I built. Uh, the surface area of that roof is probably about nine by six-ish, maybe a little bit more than that, but it's not very big. Um, and then I just, I, I actually, I had the gutters on the front of the house professionally installed. Uh, most of you guys know I'm a builder. Um, and so I've got a friend that does gutters. He did the gutters. This one here, I, I picked up at, uh, at Lowe's actually. I want to say it was like nine bucks for, uh, the section of gutter and you got to buy the ends and, and you got to buy the attachments for the downspout and all that stuff. Um, so all in all, I probably got about 25 bucks in the gutter, the gutter system alone. Um, so anyway, I, I just catch, an, I just catch whatever water falls on this, this little roof right here. I did put because uh, there I have a tree right here, um, and at the in the front I don't really have much of a tree system, so I took a little piece of chicken wire and uh, rolled it up and stuck it right over top here, so that'll catch any big debris, any leaves or anything like that in the system, and then it just uh, because it was offset, it was weird. I had to buy this weird uh, uh, elbow attachment that flexes here. I had this actually in my storage unit uh, for my uh, business. I had done a repair and had a piece left, so I didn't pay anything for that. Uh, let's go around here to the other side, and I'll show you the actual system itself. Or the, it's not a system out here. It's just a barrel, really. There's the girls. So... Uh, it comes down, catches in the gutter, comes down, and then it just runs open into this barrel. Now you can see the water is actually pretty clear, uh, but that is all pollen. <laughs> like I said, spring in Tennessee. So that's all just pollen floating on the top there. Um, I think the last rain that we had was in... Uh, it was on Tuesday, today, Saturday, so about four or five days ago, four days ago. Um, and that one rain filled me up to about, uh, I'd say probably about 30, 35 gallons, pretty close to 35 gallons. Um, and I've been using it now all week to water all the chicks, water the, the, girl, the chickens, the chicks, and the dog. And it works fine. Now with this one, it didn't have a lid on it. Um, so I just made this little uh, top with chicken wire to keep the birds and the leaves and stuff like that out of it. Um, and then on this one, I actually was able to climb inside the barrel and put a pass-through in. It's a rubber grommet, and then I just put a three-quarter inch uh, to five-eighths garden hose uh, speaking on there. So you just turn it on. And the water comes out all right so and I've got this sitting up on block high enough I can actually slide a five gallon bucket up under that which works good now another thing if we want to hook our transfer pump up to this um, this one will also get I just haven't put it on yet a quick connect fitting um, and then that way uh, whether I'm using uh, the pump and the quick connect fitting will pass the water will pass through uh, without it being connected. So you can actually still set a bucket under there, turn it on and water will still come out. Or if I want to hook my pump up uh, to pump to use the water hose or something like that, I can just pop it right in, plug the pump up and use it the same as I would the front one. Uh, but I didn't have to build no elaborate system. Now, just an FYI, if you're going to be storing the water, you need to have a cover on it. Um, this barrel here will not catch enough water to actually store really i will this one will get used the most um as far as uh gardening goes as far as uh animal watering goes this one will get used more than any of them so the water's not actually going to sit in this one as long um and so i didn't think it necessary to build a, a solid cover for it but the reason for a solid cover is to keep the daylight out um, and to keep the air from getting to it because that will allow algae and uh, other things to grow in your water and in your barrel. 
Also with an open barrel like this, I'm going to have to clean it out more often than I would uh, the closed ones like in the front. But anyway, so um, just an FYI. But that's the uh, rain collection system we have in the, in the near future. Um, we're going to be adding a, uh, like a mini water tower over here. Um, I'm going to be moving this out of here and then I'm going to build a second little chicken coop. Smaller setup than this. Um, just enough to grow youth chicks and also uh, to grow meat chicks and, uh, or meat chickens. And so once I get this done, I'm going to take some 4x4s and build me a little tower that sets just higher than our water fill up for our chickens right here. And then I've got a 65 gallon uh, poly tank, like an actual water poly tank, that I'm going to set up on top of it. And then I'm going to plumb in uh, this directly and then the water. I'll build another water uh, for the other coop. And I'll plumb it in directly. It'll hold 65 gallons, whereas right now my my watering system right here will hold five gallons. Um, so it'll be a direct feed of 65 gallons of water. So uh, as we get rain, now I don't have any way to funnel rainwater into it. But what I'll do is when that one we get some rain and that one fills up, I will use our transfer pump and pump that tank full so that the water will have more water for the chickens and not have to water them as often so um you know it sounds lazy but when you have so much going on uh on a on a homestead and and family and work and everything else uh, the less you have to do daily the better um makes makes life a little bit easier so anyway that's um that's pretty much it for this video guys i just wanted to show you guys my rain collection system I uh, hope you guys got something out of it, um, but that's about it for this video. So uh, check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Uh, if you like something you see, like it, subscribe. Uh, and uh, until next video, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.